Hi, this is Billy from Ever Expanding Life. Welcome to our Full Body Mannequin video, Part 1, The Lower Body. Today we're going to show you how to create a lower body mannequin out of duct tape and a few other resources. If you find this video helpful, please drop a like, share and subscribe, and be sure to check out all of our content on our website, everexpandinglife.com. For the frame, we've found some 2x4s that we've recovered, some scrap lumber, and we're going to take and we're going to rip these down the middle to make more or less 2x2s to use for the structure. Please remember that this video is not an instructional video on how to use power tools. We're going to be using a table saw to cut our 2x4s in half to rip them down the middle. If you're not familiar with how to use a table saw, please get the help of someone who is. Okay, so now our 2x4s are all nice and small, so we'll be able to use these for the inner frame of our mannequin. These are the materials that we're going to use to make the lower portion of our mannequin. For the outer skin, we're going to use long johns, dress socks, duct tape, and some cling wrap. Then to make the inner structure, we're going to be using some plaster of Paris and play sand along with some of the 2x4s that we ripped into 2x2s and some deck screws and some brackets and strap iron to hold them all together. We will also need something to stuff the mannequin with so we'll be taking filling from this old futon mattress. We've chosen thermals our long johns because they're more form fitting and we'll be able to get a more accurate mannequin, more accurate to my shape and so anything we create to go on it will be able to be more accurate. And for the same reason we've chosen dress socks because they're thinner than athletic socks and things like that so to give a closer fit I put the socks on the outside of the thermals because when we weight the feet we're going to be putting in a plaster of Paris mixture and we wanted to run into the socks and not push the socks down. So we wanted them on the outside of this. Also, since we're going to be pouring a plaster of Paris mixture inside it, after we do the first coat of duct tape around the feet, we're going to then encase it in some plastic wrap so that will help contain the, the mixture when we pour in the plaster of Paris. It'll be less likely to leak through. The next thing you need is someone to help you. So we've started with the feet, but before we do the ankle, we want to make sure that we're standing on a level surface and standing at a good angle with our feet so that the mannequin will be able to stand well. Now she's sitting level. So we finished the first coat of duct tape on the lower legs. Before we put the plastic on, we're going to put some more duct tape on to try and stabilize it. You'll see that the ankle is still quite flimsy and I need to have some stability in there before we go putting any plaster of Paris or anything on the inside. So we're going to add a little bit of extra duct tape in the other direction before we add our plastic wrap and some more duct tape.
Okay, so we've added some tape in the other direction, and it gives it a lot more support if I'm to push my toes down, and it's got a lot more resistance. If I lift my toes, it bends way more than I would like, but hopefully we can work around that uh, if we're mindful when we're putting in the Plaster Paris. But it definitely is more sturdy in the other direction. Um, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to start uh, wrapping it in plastic. So we've wrapped both feet with plastic, taped it to hold it in place. And you can see we've already wrapped another coat of tape on the left foot. So now we have to do the same thing to the right foot, then we can continue up the legs. We've reinforced the duct tape with a line of tape from the waist all the way down to the heel along the line where we're going to be cutting. This will serve as a border to hold the tape together. Also, we've drawn our cut line and a zigzag pattern along the cut line to help us line up the two sides when we put them back together. Now the next step is to cut the line and take this off. So it took us about four hours to do all the taping of the lower body, plus the time to cut it out. You'll see that we cut the long johns and the socks as well. They'll be part of the skin of the mannequin. We'll be able to tape it up along the lines, matching up the zigzags. So the next thing we're going to do is close up the bottom portion of the leg and we're going to be mixing up some plaster of Paris to weight the feet. So we're going to need to prepare the wooden structure that's going to insert inside of this and have that on hand before we start mixing up the plaster of Paris. We only have really only maybe five good minutes to work with the plaster of Paris before it starts hardening up and getting difficult to work with. So we want to have that all mixed up and ready and Pour that in and be able to stick the, uh, the leg boards right in and be able to brace that up before it starts to set on us too much. So we've got two of our ripped 2x4s, one in each leg here, and we have them along the line of the leg, so they're at an angle. And we're going to want to brace them at the top. So I've positioned them so they're going to be inside the leg, braced them against this level. Now we're going to mark the cut line on the top here. I'm also going to add an extra line underneath that I can hook the level to to make sure I get them back in the perfect position when I go to attach the top. Okay, so now we're going to cut off the top along the angle and we'll be able to cut a board to be able to mount on top.
I'm not worried about leveling the bottoms. They're still square the way they were, um, but they're going to be mounted inside the plaster of Paris. So the plaster of Paris is going to hold them into position. So this should do just fine. So I've cut both of those to angle, and now we're going to mount a board to hold the two together. I was originally planning on using just some brackets to put it on solid, but I realized that that's going to make it very difficult to use as a mannequin if I want to slip some pants on it or something like that because the feet are too far apart. So what I need to be able to do is to bring the legs together in order to slip something on it and then have it spring back into position. So I've got a crazy idea that I'm going to try and we'll see if it works. I've got these clamps from a jumper cable. I use the wire for another project and I'm going to see if I can actually trim off the ends, drill some holes in them, and turn these into some spring hinges. So here's my thought. I'm going to take advantage of the springiness of the clips. However, when I open it as far as I want to, there's no springiness. Springs doesn't go that far. So, remember those brackets I was going to use? Well, those grooves fit nicely right over top on that. That spring fits nicely inside there. So, I'm going to mount this bracket right here. On the bottom of this board. Like that. Then we can mount our board here. And then if we want to bend the leg in, we can bend it in. And then it'll spring back. Crazy, huh? Alright, let's try to put it together. Here's what we got. Think it just might work. Since we use clamps and not real hinges, we have a little bit of a problem here that I'm going to try to address. And that is, there's a bit of a wobble back and forth. So if I go to put anything heavy on the mannequin, I could have a little bit of a compromise here in the legs. So I'm going to cut some scrap metal out of an old lawnmower that I've been chopping up for other projects and reinforce it a little bit with a couple rough cuts. There's a teeny little bit of wobble left, but as you'll see, it's worlds better than it was. So this should do a pretty good job of holding our structure in place, and it still, still bends. Just 
You'll see this is just rough cut metal. Nothing perfect, nothing beautiful. Just something to do the job. So now that we have the inner frame prepared to go, and all we have to do is stick it in. I'm preparing the feet for the plaster of Paris. So I had to cut pretty low on the heel in order to be able to get my foot out. But well, we're going to pour plaster of Paris up to maybe in this vicinity. So we need to have this sealed up before we pour. Notice we've got our marks from before we cut. And we're lining those up as we go. To weight the feet, we're going to be using a 50-50 mixture of plaster of Paris and play sand. Now you don't have much working time. This dries pretty fast. So I recommend thoroughly mixing it by hand, mixing up the plaster of Paris and the sand before you even add any water. That way it reduces the time it takes to mix it. So we're going to fill our bucket up about halfway with plaster of Paris and then the other half with the sand. I'm going to keep it down a couple inches from the rim here so that I have some room to work. But it's actually going to compact when I add the water. So it's going to take up less space when I start putting the water in. Okay, so now I've got this mixed up real good. You can see it's nice and mixed. It doesn't look like sand or plaster of Paris. It's a nice mixture here. Doing that ahead of time is really helpful because once you start adding the water, if you try to mix it then, you're more likely to run out of time and it could, it could harden on you while you're trying to mix it. Now, all I really need to do is make sure that the water gets to everything, everything gets wet and it gets to the consistency that I want. So it's going to be kind of like a pancake batter. So you don't want it to be too thick that you can't work with it, but you're not looking for anything extremely runny either. Make sure you have everything laid out and ready before you even start. So I have more water than I'm going to need here. Make sure you have some rags handy. This is going to be messy, at least the way I'm doing it, because I'm going to be mixing this with my hands. So it's going to be all over me and it's, it's not the best feeling and it really sucks the moisture out of your hands. So maybe there's a better way that you can think of to do it, but I do it by hand. So I'm going to reach in and as I pour in the water, I'm going to be mixing it so it gets to the consistency. I'm going to be uh, feeling for any clumps or lumps and trying to smooth them out between my fingers to get it as smooth as possible because there will be some clumpiness as you're doing it and as I reach through and work it out it will uh, it'll start to become a, a smooth consistency. Now I have to do this fast because it's going to be hardening way faster than I want it to. So I gotta get in, mix, get it smooth, and then get it into the feet before it hardens quick enough that I still have time to put the frame in. Remember we made the frame. Once we get the feet filled with the plaster of Paris, we're gonna put the frame down into the plaster of Paris so that once it dries, it will be holding this and supporting it well. 
We need to watch the angle, make sure it's not leaning too far forward or too far back so it can be a good support structure for the upper portion of the mannequin. So we're going to go ahead and pour in the water, get the mixture right, and then quickly get it into the feet and put the legs in. Now we've cleaned it up a little bit here, wiped off all that extra plaster of Paris that spilled. And now we're going to start closing this up so that we don't have difficulty trying to stuff all the stuffing down from the top and so that we can get an even fill. We're going to put some of the stuffing in and then tape it up a little bit, put more in, tape it up a little more as we go. It's coming together nicely, really taking the shape. So we can close the legs to slip on some pants and then open it up and it stands nicely by itself. The plaster of Paris feet has worked really well. Stands up quite nice on its own. To see the mannequin in action, check out our video, How to Hem Dress Pants Using a Blind Stitch. We hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please drop a like, share, and subscribe. And be sure to check out all of our content on our website, everexpandinglife.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. May you be blessed with an ever-expanding life.